Hello and welcome to the Crystal Archive Podcast, episode number 28. I'm Mr. Crystal, and I'm welcoming for the first time two users to uh, the first ever live Crystal Archive Podcast. So, uh, this is a live podcast episode uh, recorded with Tiny, uh, through Tiny Chat. And uh, I've got two chat participants now, and hopefully there will be more people showing up as the show progresses. And we'll have commentary and questions as we go along. Uh, and so, with that, let's get to the typical stuff I'm going to cover. Uh, the, all the old news. Uh, well, no, first, uh, it's been such a long time since the, uh, the previous episode that I thought it would be a good idea, <clears throat> good idea to cover what we've... Uh, what what hasn't happened uh, since the last podcast, which was something like eight months ago. Uh, let me see. It was back in uh, January, January 30th, 2011. So 11 months, or 10 months, approximately. Very long time. So, first of all, uh, Fox Type, one of the participants here, uh, is currently, hopefully, finishing up his videos of Ayano. Uh, from Further Confusion 2011, and uh, it's a lot of work for him. Uh, he's been giving me brief updates as he goes along, uh, but hopefully we'll see something from that uh, very soon and be able to post that up. Um, let's see what else. I, ha I still have pictures of Ayano that needs to be posted to the uh, cosplay section. And uh, otherwise, there were several cosplayers that showed up since then that need their own pages. And a police officer is driving by my apartment. Awesome. Yes, and I do plan to go to the uh, Further Confusion 2012 uh, and meet Ayano myself uh, in the next couple of months. So that's exciting. All right, let's get on to the news that's happened since the last podcast. We're going to go through this. Even though it's been a lot of months of not much posting because I've been busy with this new job here in California, uh, there there still was quite a bit of there still were quite a quite a few things that happened. So the first thing that happened since our last podcast was that Fox Type sent the first video of Iano. Um, hanging out with people at Further Confusion. That was a very cute video, uh, nice music, and uh, you should all check that out if you haven't already. Shortly after that, uh, shortly after that, um, I got the first video, or sorry, I don't know if it was the first, it was one of the first videos from Gray Fox Fire, sorry, Gray, Fo Gray Fire Fox, who wrote uh, who's been using uh, Rife 2002's 3D model to make amazing animations. And this, the first one that showed up was the, uh, the mall animation test. And that started off a series of videos that were later posted, along with the model itself. And, of course, Rife 2002's original image uh, model. The next bit of news was a person emailed me uh, named... Uh, Sue Meyer, who did a cursed cosplay, which was completed with a uh, normal-looking clothes, but otherwise had uh, furred arms, a tail, a and a uh, a crystal uh, slash cursed head, uh, head, fursuit head with purple hair. It's very good. She later uh, made a video of her walking her, herself walking around in Walmart dressed in such a way which I thought was amusing. Next came my favorite holiday of the year, on the internet anyway, April Fool's Day, 2011. In that, I claimed that I finally, after much searching, received a job offer from Retro Studios, the creator of Metroid Prime and the other, uh, and uh, Donkey Kong uh, Country, Re Donkey Kong Country Returns. Uh, and I said that I would be forced to no longer run the Crystal Archive, much to my regret. And as usual, most people fell for it. Good job, guys. 
anyways, um, it was kind of sad that I didn't get that job because that would have been amazing. But alas, it was not destined to happen. But don't worry, there's a happy end to that story a little bit later. Meanwhile, this time, Star Fox 64 3D was beginning to have its press information revealed to the internet, and it got a Japanese-only website. Since then, it's been released, and I've played it. It's a very good game. We'll talk about that later. Uh, next, on April 20th, 2011, I made a personal request that everybody pray for Lucas, uh, a longtime Crystal Archive reader and a, a friend of mine. Um, I have an update on that. He, he, he was very thankful for your prayers, and for a while he was doing much better. Uh, he's, he had brain cancer, as you may recall. Unfortunately, I've just learned in the last couple of weeks that though Lucas is now free of his brain cancer, he's lost a significant portion of his brain, uh, or at least the area that it can be used for higher thinking, and so he's a mere shadow, shadow of his previous self. This is very sad. Uh, I talked to him, um, and he has difficulty remembering and pronouncing words. I hope it gets better, but it doesn't look good. So, that's a bit of sad news. I apologize. All right, continuing on. We have, uh, I had a rumor. A rumor that the Wii 2, which now we know as the Wii U, was going to be announced, and it was, otherwise known as Project Cafe at the time. Um, there were some people talking about a Star Fox game in early development, and that may well be, but there were no such mentions in the actual uh, press conference at E3. Not many games of any kind, as a matter of fact. Next, uh, we got more and more information for Star Fox 64 3D. Lots of, uh, lots of videos and reviews. And... Uh, then after that, I got some some very good news. I got a job in California as a game programmer. The uh, the preset the pro, the profession I've been trying to get a job at for a long time, and I've been looking for a job for something like eight months. It was a very difficult time to be looking for a job, but uh, now I have this job, and I'm amazingly content at it. It's uh, it's a really good job, and. For those of you who don't, who have not yet had a job or had not yet had a good job, let me tell you that if you find the right job and you uh, work at it really hard, and it's it's really the thing that allows you to be creative and and express yourself and be well used, um, it is more satisfying than than even I thought was possible. To be to be happy with a job, I'm I'm more happy to go into work than I thought I'd be happy to do anything work related ever. It's truly amazing. I'm I'm in flow as they say, so that's really good. Um, so then let's move on away from the personal stuff. Glitcher uh, sent me some uh, a, a speed paint of a, an amazing. Uh, a crystal picture where she's riding on a cloud runner and uh, ho holding up her staff using some form of psychic magic or something. Very epic looking. Posted the speed paint, and then a little bit later, I finally got around to posting the actual image that he sent. Next, uh, we had some pre E3 discussion. Talked about the different possibilities for E3. None of them happened as far as the Wii U. We didn't have Star Fox uh, announced for the for the Wii U, but who knows what will happen in the future. Um, we got a little bit more information about how Star Fox 64 will play, which you can use both the, the control stick, uh, or I think it's called the circle pad, and you can also use, uh, uh, you can look around the room using the uh, the motion of the, uh, the camera, the images going past the camera, and it can tell where you're aiming the screen. Very effective for controlling the aircraft with very with precision. Although I, I don't think I've actually used that method. I think I tried it once, but uh, I'm used to the old circle pad uh, method. So let's go on. We got a new cosplayer. 
who did a who did a uh, full body skin type suit like Ayano's. Um, the the cosplayer was Sting Chameleon, and she dressed as Crystal at Upcon 2011, which is a Swedish anime and manga convention. So that covers the news until uh, June 16th. Continuing forwards in time. Uh, I've been throughout this time. I was, of course, posting as many fan films as I could get out. Although it's difficult, there are so many more fan fi- fan films uh, for me to review than I have time to post most of the time. Um, decided to change my update policy so I would try and post news and then worry about archiving it later. And I've done that to some degree. Although I I need to really post news like I like I promised I would. We got a lot of high resolution renders and additional videos from Fox. Uh, from uh, Gray Firefox using the the combined Gray Firefox and Rife 2002 model. That was looking good. Um, let's see what's next. More speed paints and fan films all over the place. I also got one of my old friends from uh, Star Fox Online, Star Fox Runner, to help me post some things. And uh, and he would have posted more, but in this case, it's my fault. Um, I didn't give Star Fox Runner uh, enough material for him to post. I've been too busy to even tell my helpers what to do, unfortunately. But uh, hopefully I can change that this weekend after the podcast is over. Uh, let's see. <laughs> so next we had a one of several new Crystal plushies. So this one was made by Crystal Botchton1. Uh, I'm sorry, the artist, the artist was Yutaka Yumi, made, uh, it looks like a two foot tall crystal plushie, very nice looking. Uh, finally, we released Gray Foxfire's completed crystal rig, which allows you to animate crystal in Maya the way that he does in his, uh, mall test videos. Um, shortly after that... Um, in August, uh, one of the original artists for Star Fox Assault at Namco in Japan released his character sheets as part of his portfolio, and one of them was for Crystal. Uh, so we get uh, a back, front, and side view of Crystal, along with all the other characters from Star Fox, Star Fox Assault. Um, interestingly, her tail is much much smaller than it than it appears to should be. Uh, in these drawings, but otherwise looks exactly like her suit in the game. Next, we had the uh, crystal life-size doll. In fact, there were two life-size dolls made by an artist who specializes in uh, life-size dolls, Dude Man 2. Um, this man, this artist, uh, makes lots of full-size dolls, um, and quite a bit of discussion on the actual nature and usage of these dolls uh, proceeded in the comments section, but were thankfully mod- moderated uh, towards the end of that. Needless to say, or rather, I should say, that uh, Dude Man 2 has proven himself to be a man of good character, and the devious potential uses of such dolls are not in use in this case, or any of his other dolls. So, I applaud his efforts to make something that few people can make, a life-size character from scratch. That's, that's actually very impressive. Next, we have the Star Fox 64 3D OST, the original soundtrack, available on YouTube. Lots of interesting uh, mixes of the original old songs from Star Fox 64. Um, some of the old ones I like better, some of the new ones I like better, it's different. But the Zonus theme was particularly good, in my opinion. Grave Firefox sent me a short film called Crystal and the Firefly, which he tried to showcase every potential feature of the model, such as the uh, facial animation, lighting, uh, the fur rendering, and otherwise tried to turn it into kind of a story-based fan film rather than just her standing there. Since he's not really an animator, he had difficulty doing much movement, but otherwise, people love the film. It's very cute. Oh, and he also 
he also uh, strived to put some uh, some nice audio effects instead of uh, a mere single word. There were lots of uh, uh, onomatopoeias, I guess. No, not that's not the word. Usage of, of wording that, that conveys a sound and also uh, a couple of words in there. So a, a, a more rich audioscape, I should say. Next, the State of the Union. So... I had been, at the time, not posting very much. There, there were whole months between, between posts on the Crystal Archive podcast. And this is from, I'm sorry, on the Crystal Archive. And this is from October 11, 2011. Uh, and I simply state that uh, I'm really busy, but otherwise, here's the things I'm working on. Uh, I, I first made a new chapter of my fanfic, which hadn't been updated in something like two years. Which is ridiculous. I need to finish that thing. Uh, secondly, I've been rebuilding the fan art tools from scratch using uh, Ajax and JavaScript technologies so they run in the browser. That'll allow other people to help me um, find and sort um, fan art into the appropriate areas for use on the site, uh, which hopefully will mean I can start having other people help me. Uh, it's certainly going to reduce the amount of time it takes to, to do the fan art, which can sometimes be a week-long process with the sheer number of fan arts out there, thousands at a time, literally. Um, thirdly, um, I uh, let's see here. I wanted to make it easier to submit fan films and fan fiction to the site, mostly so I don't have to personally deal with it every time. Um, and that's going to be simply a matter of a forum on the site that will allow people to submit uh, all the information about their fix, and then hopefully I can can tie that into a way for uh, my people who are helping me uh, review fan fictions to uh, to be able to get oh, to be able to see which fan fictions need to be reviewed and submit reviews without me having to email them out personally. I'm planning a new Crystal Archive, version 4, which will be the first major change since, I don't know how long, years. Um, basically, the, the web has changed significantly since I made the site, although uh, the site is still very stable and very, uh, very effective, very simple. I feel like it can be even made even more simple, yet more effective, uh, using the latest HTML5 technologies and... Um, uh, and uh, the JavaScript technologies, which will allow uh, a more interactive site. Uh, and I'm I'm debating whether or not to have it uh, to allow open sign sign in, so everybody can have an account here, which could also mean eventually making some kind of uh, some kind of uh, integrated forums or something like that, so we can have discussions apart from the actual posts. And lastly, I said I need to do a podcast, and I suggested that we might do a live show, which we're now doing. So that's at least one success in that in that list of things that I wish to do. <clears throat> uh, Robocop sent me a link to the Crystal Lovers Steam group, which Steam is uh, Valve's game delivery framework, and uh, I linked that for his uh, for for his group, and I think they got some people joined just because of that link. So that's good. Next, we have My Little Ponies, and that's something I wanted to talk about uh, briefly. Uh, I don't know if you can see them, but behind me are my, uh, my ponies. Let me show you them. I actually have some back there. Um, in particular, uh, this, is, uh, this is Pinkie Pie. Let's see. Can you see that? There it is. Pinkie Pie. That's cute, isn't it? For those of you who haven't seen the show, uh, as I explained in the post, it's quite amazing. Uh, it's um, it's uh, it's uh, it's a family show, but it was designed for all ages, so it's designed to be entertaining to everyone, not just little girls. And uh, I've been enthralled with the show since I discovered it in back in January of 2011, and uh, and so have many other furries and non-furries out there. So uh, anyway, that brought uh, 
I brought this out when I was talking about the fact that someone on DeviantArt, namely uh, that geek girl, made a custom crystal My Little Pony, which I thought was amazing because Crystal already has a, uh, a cutie mark on her thigh, the cutie marks being the, uh, the representative symbol of each pony that they get uh, when they find out what they are to do with their lives, basically, what they're born to do. I guess Crystal is born to have a spiral, and it doesn't make as much sense, does it? But anyway, it was cute. It had a little staff, and uh, otherwise, I was just very impressed with the quality of that customization. And the remaining posts were, wow, a whole four posts in a row were about the fact that we're going to be streaming this right now, uh, and how to deal with it, what services we use, we would use. We finally, I finally, in the last, at the last second, found this tiny chat program, which does everything I want. It allows uh, me to make a video audio stream uh, that everybody can see without signing in, and that everyone can chat with me without signing in either. And if I, if I so choose, with a little setup, I can actually have other people chatting with me with audio and video, although I haven't quite figured out all of those settings, um, so it might be a little trial and error, which we'll save for the end of the podcast. So that's all that's happened since the last podcast, on the site anyway. There's certainly been a lot more. Um, otherwise, I will say that I have... Let me, i got to open this. So, my mail. So I, I opened uh, I opened my mail program, and I'm looking here. I, I was able to actually answer about five or ten emails last uh, two nights ago. That's good, but I still got a long way to go. I have some. I have 150 messages um, in my inbox, and almost all of them need to be responded to, uh, as opposed to uh, you know just like. Uh, every time someone posts on my uh, on one of my videos on YouTube, I get a I get a comment. Most of these are things that are in my inbox because I haven't had time to actually respond to them, and they go all the way back to January first, two thousand eleven. That's the oldest one, and I need uh, I need to go through and answer all of those. But meanwhile, I have answered a few, and that means I have some questions. That with uh, with known responses that I'll read through at the end. Um, I kind of did this podcast uh, on the spur of the moment, so I don't have a a list in front of me of what new things to talk about. So I'll do two things. First off, I'll I'll talk about the things I can think of off the top of my head that need to be talked about, and then I will be open for questions uh, from the chat room. Uh, and when that's done, I'll do the canned questions that I have already recorded um, responses to via email. And then lastly, uh, maybe we'll try and do an audio setup with one of our listeners. Still only two listeners. I'm kind of sad by this. That's okay. Still got a long... It's only been 24 minutes and I've already covered all the old news. Let me think. What's new? So... Let me start by talking about what I plan for the new Crystal Archive version 4. Okay, so one of the things is Gray Fox, Gray Firefox, who did all those uh, amazing 3D models and renders, uh, has been kind enough to make a 3D image for the header of the site. So at the top of the page, in addition to saying the words Crystal Archive, it's also going to say um, or it's also going to have a picture of Crystal sitting there. Uh, sorry, she's laying um, across the top of the banner with a laptop, like uh, like she's basically viewing the website. And uh, it's a very nice image. And he was uh, Gray Firefox was uh, was gracious enough to make changes as I asked for them. Uh, the the site itself has a nice blue background to contrast. Uh, it's a light blue, so you can still see Crystal. And uh, otherwise, it's a very uh, simple layout. It's the There's a navigation on the top, and then the rest of the page is content. 
Now, what I want to do is divide the content up into columns so that we have, uh, so I can, I can show multiple things at the same time and have a, a greater compression of content on the, on the front page. But the main, the main new feature is the navigation bar, which, as I said, it's at the, at the top instead of on the side like it, like it currently is. Um, and when you scroll down through the page, it stays on the top with you as you go. Inside the navigation bar, it's not just links as it currently is. Instead, uh, when you hover over any individual section, such as um, such as uh, video, audio, etc., you will see um, every page below it in a drop-down. And let me just quickly here, let me see if I can remember uh, where where I put that. I made a I made the page so I could look at it. Uh, one moment, I have to find it. But uh, I, I came up with a new format for uh, for the links. So right now, what we have on the side of the page is uh, the series uh, of links, starting with articles, then images, audio, video, fan art, fan games, uh, 3D projects, fan films, fan fiction, cosplay, podcast, downloads, and if you're a, if you're a member, uh, because you donated, donated $10 or more, uh, you'll see a secret area where I keep the secret things, and then lastly, a home button. And then underneath, I have some quick links to some uh, the co more common things that people want to look at. But on the news site, and I'm, i got to find out where I put it, I posted it online somewhere so I could test things out, but it's... Uh, not publicly viewable. One second. Nope, that's not it. Okay. <laughs> it's hard to remember where I put these things sometimes. Well, that's not it either. I'm having difficulty finding it. Oh, I bet I know where it is. Nope, not there either. Well, I know I have it locally. I apologize for the delay. Uh, for those of you listening, it's... Uh, it's just me searching through my fo my uh, my folders and uh, server. All right, here we go. K for redesign. Working HTML. All right, let's have a look at this. It's been a couple weeks since I actually saw this, so uh, you'll forgive me if I've forgotten exactly what it looks like. All right, so we got Crystal on the top. It says Crystal Archive. And now, okay, so the top bar, in, instead of having all those different links, now they're more sorted. So we start off with news. News is basically the home page, which it currently is. It's the, it's the, uh, the latest news and posts as they happen. Um, and then we have articles, then images, audio, video. Those are all pretty self-explanatory. But then I have the final one, which is called fan because there are so many different things that start with fan. Fan fiction, fan art, fan films, um, and, and other things that don't really start with fan, but they are fan projects, such as cosplay, 3D models, and fan games. So those are all now going to be under the fan category, and they're all, all links are available in there uh, in a nice laid-out way. And then finally, on the right of that is a search box right there in the... Uh, and the navigation. And all this is transparent and follows you as you go down the page, although I've, I'm going to continue to work on the design. It's certainly not final. Uh, I apologize for not being able to show you this. I, I want to finish a little bit more of it before I, I show an actual image of it. Uh, so there we go. There's that. So, oh, and that's something I, I really want to do this afternoon after the podcast is, is work on that. Uh, 
because uh, I've got the I've got the I've been bitten by the design bug yet again, and I think now is a good time to express my creativity on that subject. Okay, what else? Star Fox 64 3D came out, and I bought it. Based the, uh, maybe the second day it came out, I was I was busy at work, and I got it on the way home. Um, when it actually came out, so uh, I've played it. And it is definitely a major graphical improvement over the original. Um, all of the characters look better. All of the ships and environments look better. Um, I find it hilarious that even though they improved all the graphics, including those of the characters, they managed to keep all the animation exactly the same. So when they're walking in to receive their reward from uh, General Pepper, they walk just as stiffly and with just as few joints and with their clothes looking like they're made out of sheet metal, as they did in the original game, which is kind of hilarious. Also, when they're talking, and when they're, you know, it's a close-up on their, uh, them talking behind the cockpit's uh, canopy, you, they still kind of vibrate instead of actually moving their mouth uh, to the words. So that was kind of funny. Uh, otherwise, I, uh, I beat the game. I didn't beat, I didn't beat the real ending because... Sadly, I am not as good as I used to be, and even back then, I don't think I was. I did very well getting to the end. Um, but I did beat the game all the way through using uh, one path, and I got to see all the different levels along that path. And I will say that uh, uh, several of the uh, the stages look fantastic by comparison, especially Solar, because Solar in the original game had a very simple background. Uh, the background was, I think, it was just some animated texture in the off in the distance that was some gray and black and orange fire that was very low resolution. But now, now it's it's like a, uh, it's an actual pixel, pixel shader that's uh, very cool looking. Uh, I just remember being very impressed with it. All the graphics is, is, is much better. And the control is smooth. It's easy to control. I find that the 3DS itself is actually kind of small in my hands, so I have difficulty um, pushing the right buttons over a long period of time, especially when I'm stressed out from playing, because uh, my fingers tend to get go too far over the buttons and I, I miss things. But other than that, it's uh, it controls really, really well. Oh, and I also I would also like to be able to play Star Fox on a bigger screen. I think this genre really benefits from having a larger screen. And so while this is probably the best effort we'll ever see on a Star Fox, uh, a Star Fox handheld game, I think, that, uh, I think that Star Fox really needs to be on the big screen so that you can have more resolution to see more things around you while you're flying. That, that, that was a kind of a limitation for me. But it's a good game. You should, you should pick it up if you like Star Fox. Um, I certainly did enjoy it. Um, so there we go. What else can I talk about? Viewers, I could use some help. Well, uh, do you have any questions right now or any, or any comments, things you would like me to talk about? Nothing? Uh, ben says that expert mode in, uh, in Star Fox 64 3D was easier than in the original game. I don't doubt that. My, Miyamoto was saying something about uh, doing whatever he could to make the, the level of entry to play the game easier for new players. Because for some people, I mean, this game came out in 1997 or 6. So, uh, it's been more than, yeah, more than, I can't count. Oh, it's been um, almost 15 years. Not quite, but almost. It's a really long time. I really enjoyed the original. So no, no questions? I'm surprised. Well, all right, with with no question. Hmm? Oh, 
and it's almost the tenth birthday of Star Fox Adventures. I see. Long time. Oh, someone asked me. Uh, this isn't one of the emails in the uh, in the section I'll be reading from in a bit. But uh, someone asked me, do they think that Nintendo will ever remake Adventures? And I think that probably not. Or at least not for a really, really long time. Because Star Fox Adventures really didn't sell that well compared to other games that get remakes, such as The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Uh, if I remember correctly, Adventures only sold around 1.5 million copies, which is enough to get it on a bestsellers list, but uh, not enough to get it universal acclaim like uh, some of us would like to have. Although, um, it would certainly be a nice change if uh, if they would if it was remade with the nice graphics, but also uh, with a, a nod towards the original game, namely that um, instead of having Crystal trapped for the whole game, uh, have all the characters, or sorry, have her be released quickly, or otherwise never get caught, and team up with Fox McCloud, uh, towards the end, towards the beginning of the game, uh, so that so that then it can be a game where you swap off characters depending on uh, what puzzles you need to solve and, and other concepts that were originally going to be in the game but never really made it. Apparently, like Resident Evil Zero, which I've never played because I don't tend to play violent games. But whatever floats your boat. I know we have uh, Resident Evil mods for Crystal. Speaking of mods. I have tons and tons of mods to deal with um, on the site that I need to post, and I haven't had time to post. Mods are some of the more difficult things to post about because they're not a single thing, like a video or an image. They're a series of screenshots and descriptions of how to get it, location, links, uh, to where the mod is hosted. And that's if I'm not even hosting it. If I'm hosting it, I also have to keep track of where the, uh, where the, the, host, uh, the file is. I think that's another thing I will want to improve for the new Crystal Archive 4, both for me to make it easier to post things, but also for anyone else who's going to be helping me manage the site in the future. And that is um, uh, letting uh, having some kind of uh, download management system, post management system for files. WordPress already has one, but I don't know how I like their organizational structure, although uh, it might have improved since the last time I used it, so I'll look into that. Um, let me see. Interesting bit of tidbit uh, information on, uh, on my attempt to make the new fan art tools. So right now, what I've accomplished with the fan art tools is the following. Um, you can give it a series of links and it will divide them up into their appropriate sections. So um, it will detect if the link is on DeviantArt, Fur Affinity, uh, FanArch Central, Central, or some other place, and, uh, and, and put them into the appropriate category. It will also identify links that are not in the correct format. This has been a very difficult thing with my more recent checks into the FanArt uh, of DeviantArt in particular. See, DeviantArt has been bitten by the Ajax bug and now loads significant portions of their website with Ajax, which means that they load a bare page first and then use JavaScript to pull in the rest of the page at a later time. Uh, this is fine. I can deal with that in most cases. But uh, the links, if you notice, if you click on a link, it no longer, or if you click on a fan art in a gallery or on, from a search, you'll notice that instead of going to the permalink, the, the permanent link that I have to link to on the Crystal Archive, uh, in, instead of going there, it gives you a hash link, which has a, a pound, uh, an exclamation point, and a hash, uh, a, number t a number symbol in the, in the uh, URL, and then it specifies a number. Uh, alpha numeric, alpha numeric number, and then you uh, you put that into there, and what it's doing is it's actually loading up a bare page, and then using JavaScript to load the rest of the page, as opposed to the permalink, which actually loads the page. And I did a lot, a lot of research on this, and I found that right now, at least, there is no way for me to turn the hash 
URLs into the permalink URLs. There's no way for me to follow the logic from one page to the other. So I have to do that manually still. That's kind of annoying. So Foxtype, if you're listening uh, still, I you send me links to fan art all the time, which I'm very thankful for. Uh, and you're also sending me links to the actual image itself. I mean, sorry, the, the page, not the image itself, at my request. And if it's not too much trouble uh, in the future, see, this is the thing. Don't, uh, if you can, I mean, you don't have to, I'll do it. But if, if it's not too much trouble, consider the fact that I can't automatically get stuff from the page if it's in that hash format. So every time I get a, a link that's to a hash page, I have to manually go to the page and get the original link. It's not too bad, but it's kind of annoying. If you if you uh, if you happen to see the permanent link anyway, when you're copy pasting those to my email, that'd be fantastic. Otherwise, don't worry about it. I, I have systems in place to account for it. All right. So anyway, with uh, after that, uh, we take the images. Sorry, the URLs, and then I have another tool that's also a web page. You give it all the links. And what it does is it asynchronously with JavaScript uh, downloads the uh, the page and then parses it for information, namely uh, the artist name, the title of the art, uh, where the art can be downloaded from, uh, the original link to the page, uh, and I'm looking into storing other things such as what date it was posted and, uh, and uh, maybe what format, what category it was in. And then it stores all that information to a file that I can then use in other tools. And so I'm at, I've already converted my, the old system to use uh, these new file formats. So now I've got, I've got the difficult task of writing a file downloader for this uh, these art. So now that I have the download links for all the images, I have to write a thing that will use JavaScript to download all the images it finds in the file and then sort them on my computer, which is a little more difficult because it requires server-side scripting. And then, uh, that way I can use the images to detect whether there are duplicates or not. Which is also something I picked up while making tools at my game programming job. And then, uh, after that, we've got all the data. We've got the artist name, we've got the link, we've got the title. Um, so then I'm going to have some tools that use those to show me the links, show me the images, in a certain order so I can, with just a couple of clicks, specify one or the other, okay, this is traditional art, this is not traditional art, it's 3D art. And just quickly, with a, with a wizard, go through all the images and pick which category they go in. And from there, once I've seen them all, I can, uh, I can do another similar wizard that will allow me with one click to specify favorites, add warnings, and uh, otherwise add the new, pe new tag to everything. And from there, the re remaining script that turns that, that data back into a web page, a table that, that I'll then post on the Crystal Archive, that's uh, actually trivial to write. But there, are, as you can tell, there's I'm only about halfway through the actual process of uh, rewriting the tools, so that's going to be a little, little while yet. Okay, uh, what else is new? Haven't heard any new rumors. From, uh, from Wii U or about Star Fox on the Wii U or, or any new Star Fox games, unfortunately. Um, drawing a blank, guys. Any other questions before I go on to actual questions that I have recorded? I've been podcasting for about 44 minutes. It's uh, actually pretty short. I was expecting a little longer, considering how long it's been since the previous podcast. No questions. All right. We're going to move on to uh, this final section. Um, and that is uh, the traditional reader questions. Uh, these are questions that the readers uh, of the site email me, and I'll... Um, I, uh, I answer them, but I feel it's, uh, it's good for everybody to hear. Uh, the, the answers to my questions often, uh, often uh, answers some of your own questions. might perhaps answer some of your own questions that you've not yet, uh, not yet asked. So, first question comes from Jacob. 
who writes, I see your 3D projects, but, I w but, but what do I do with these? I don't know how to view them in 3D. I'll figure it out, but please leave instructions for the next, next person to come along. I responded that I'm afraid that this is a large problem and that can't simply be explained in one place. Basically, you'll need some kind of tutorials to figure out what you'll need to work with the 3D programs. Then, using the crystal models, there will be uh, there will be no different uh, no no difference than what you already know. So, you do you look at 3D 3D models. If you know how to look at 3D models, you should be able to look at these crystal 3D models. And then, further tutorials will allow you to do other things like animation, uh, recording video, uh, maybe even doing fit, fur rendering or something like that. Oh, uh, Fox Type makes a comment that uh, that uh, Nintendo is doing uh, having difficult time with 3DS. Yes, I should talk about that. The um, the 3DS was priced um, very high, but that was okay. the The price itself, though a barrier, is not was not um, difficult in particular, considering that people originally paid $600 for a PlayStation 3. No, the main problem was the fact that they released the, the system with no killer software, no game that everyone had to have, which is interesting. <clears throat> which is interesting because the original, three, the original DS actually had the same problem. Um, it released with no major games, or at least games that weren't ports of older uh, N64 titles. Um... They also had a very slow start, and people thought that the uh, the DS was not going to do too well. But it turns out, once Nintendo came out with two tribu two pivotal games, uh, three three pivotal games really really turned it around for the DS. One was Nintendo Dogs plus Cats, or sorry, Nintendo Dogs, which uh, started bringing in lots of female users. Then there was um, the brain training games which brought lots and lots of casual uh, and older players in. And lastly, for the core gamer, it, it was, they were brought in with the new Super Mario Brothers, which, continue, which is a continuing game series to this day. Uh, unfortunately, they released the 3DS as early as they could while breaking even. And the 3DS actually cost Nintendo the entire cost that you pay, uh, as opposed to all of their previous systems where they made money from day one. Uh, so by reducing the price this early, they've lost a significant chunk of money. Thankfully, though, I think that the, the main problem that they were facing, the problem of not having killer software, is as of maybe today, because the new Super Mario Brothers, Super, is a Super Mario 3D Land, I think it's called. That came out today, I think. And uh, that is probably considered the first major hardcore game that's not a port. Um, for the system, so uh, and and also Nintendo plans for I think something like one major 3DS game from them specifically each month uh, for the foreseeable future. So that's going to improve both their bottom line and it's going to raise the standards of quality for third-party um, game developers. So um, I remain hopeful. After all, the 3DS had an even worse, worse start. The 3DS, I mean, the original DS had a worse start. The 3DS um, is actually selling, selling faster than the DS in the same time frame, which, which actually was a surprise to me. All right, let me continue on to the next question. Big Jim 3D writes, First, did you submit any newer rendered fan art list than the one that was last uh, uploaded on the 26th of July? Because if yes, I shockingly can't locate it at all. Secondly, I'd like to inform you that I am also making videos of Crystal in the t for the time being. Or mostly making videos rather than images with her in it anymore. One of them is also uploaded to YouTube. So I've been checking your fan film list and never got to see my videos posted there. Not that I want to sound demanding, rude, or, or, or anything like that. But uh, most probably you didn't find it find out about it in general. But would you mind posting my video on the fan films list? Because I see other people's uh, other people's fan films, and I will. Uh, sorry, 
because I because I because I like to see what other people and fans of Crystal will have to say about it. He sent me the link, and uh, he says, "By the way, I'd like to congratulate you for your video uh, with Crystal, a girl like that. It's really awesomely done, uh, both image and sound, both in image and sound. It got uh, it was exciting to me very much." He says. Okay. In addition, I am I am preparing new versions of the models for the Star Fox series on what concerns the main heroes. Crystal's new model is already done and posted to my DA gallery, including a new video trailer. Fox's model has also been finished some minutes ago, and uh, if you would like to know, I'm still going for more. I think I should be doing a character. A, can, a character we all knows, Dark Side, in the upcoming week. Uh, anyways, please inform me what you think of the video and when it will be included in your fan film list. Even if I will be checking it out every day myself. Well, Big 3D, Big Gem 3D, uh, Big Gem 3D. By the way, I believe if I remember correctly, does a lot of 3D rendered art on DeviantArt, and um, it sounds like he's doing more, and maybe we'll be doing some 3D art. I mean, sorry, 3D videos in the future, which I look forward to. Good 3D animation is hard to find. Uh, anyway, he respond, or my response is that, uh, okay, here's what happened with the last fan art update. Right before I do, did the new art posting in July, I found a bunch of missing art on the main list. I had planned on removing those from the main list, but then I got caught, caught up finding the new arts. So I finished the new arts and posted those on the home page, but then I did not get around to adding them to the main list. Actually, that would have taken only a couple minutes, but I got so busy that I forgot. And now that I'm trying to rewrite the whole fan art finding system so that it will be easier for others to help me in the process, uh, that's why there hasn't been a new fan art update in recent months. Actually, there's another issue too. DeviantArt changed how they deal with images and such. Not that it's any harder to find, but the uh, find and find the data for each deviation. Uh, but the time it, but each time it changes, my scripts break. I'm working on a system that would minimize the changes I have to make every time they change something. Anyway, if you have a list of fan art that you think should be on the list, and but it is neither on the main list or the fan art update post, feel free to send it to me. Thanks for sending the film. Uh, I'm also way behind on the fan films as well. I have 20 or 30 or so to go through. And I haven't looked at some of the new ones in in a couple weeks. I'll uh, I'll add yours to the list, and hopefully I'll start adding those new ones soon. And by the way, people, my uh, my list of fan arts to post is somewhere around forty or fifty now. I just I just don't have time to post them these days. Anyway, cool video. I just watched it, and I'm glad you and now others have begun animating the model instead of just posting it. I hope that you can start putting her in more actiony scenes soon. Uh, when you finish the models, be sure to let me know, and I will feature them on the Crystal Archive. And so far as I know, he hasn't finished them yet, although it could be an email that uh, that I have yet to respond to because I'm so busy. Um, Enruku writes, This is Enruku, or Ray Synchros on the KA updates. I will, I will like to say that you are awesome, and on the KA, and at life itself. Epic. Thank you very much. Um, I am looking at your website, and it looks beautiful. You are a master of your fields. It's like I wrote, it's like I wrote this. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I took it upon my, myself to understand HTML and JavaScript to see how all this is done, just for the fun of it. My, inqu- my main question is this. Uh, which is a good ebook or website to learn so I can start coding and designing my own website? Also, if you can, uh, can you show me how to link information into my site, like, for example, to see how many views an art receives, or poll guests on how to an- or poll guests to answer a questions, such as how much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could see crystal? I responded that, thank you for your kind words, sir. How to learn HTML and JavaScript? I'm glad you ask. First. Learn the basics of HTML and CSS. HTMLdog.com has a complete and good tutorial on the subject. I um, it actually I actually took a class uh, years and years ago on the very 
very basic HTML co- coding where I gained, uh, sorry, where I gained my, uh, I got my basic understanding of HTML there. Where I gained my real experience, however, um, most of my experience was from finding websites that had a feature I liked or an article about a specific feature. I copied the code and then messed around with it until I got it to do what I wanted. HTML and CSS are actually not programming languages, but markup languages. The difference is that HTML and CSS are designed for specifying what things are and what things look like, respectively. Whereas JavaScript and other programming languages, actual programming languages, are about what things do or how things behave. For learning JavaScript, I would first watch a video called or entitled JavaScript, The Good Parts. It's by a person named uh, Douglas Crawford. It's about an hour long, and you can find it on YouTube under in the uh, Google Tech Talks channel. It gives you pers- a perspective on how JavaScript was created and some key things to look, f- look out for. From there, just a few simple tutorials you can find on w3schools.com. Note, these addresses may be wrong, so check in with the Google search to find it. Other than that, just keep learning and solving problems. And if you want to know how to do something, either look, out, look up how other people have solved it, or find a website that does it, look through its source code until you figure it out. As for site statistics, such as how often a page has been viewed, I would recommend Google Analytics and you simply plug in their JavaScript code at the bottom of your pages, which you'll need a Google account for, but it's free. As for polls, you'll probably find some free poll service that will allow you to just embed some code on their pages. The trick with with polls and other complex uh, interactions with the users is the fact that it must communicate with the server. The server programming is a little bit bit more difficult than programming um, with JavaScript. Namely, you actually have to have the ability to program on your server, which a lot of hosting services don't allow. All right, let me see here. Um, okay, next. Lord Tar Naren writes, I want to congratulate you on the creation and ongoing success of the Crystal Archive. Though I am yet to... in uh, enjoy the Star Fox series other than a brief geekish geek session with my friend on Star Fox Adventures. I fell instantly in love, but not perverting here, with Crystal in every aspect. I have a few questions about you and Star Fox. First, I would like to know your real name. Second, are you going to do your own 3D Crystal render? Three, will you produce more fan works? The lip sync songs in the archive are great. Four, how long does it take you to make a podcast, including making your notes, etc.? And five, where can I get my hands on a copy of the Maya Binary or similar software without paying thousands of dollars? I responded that I'm glad you like the site and our favorite Blue Vixen. If you like Crystal, you're a furry. Nothing perverted about that. First question, what's my real name? Well, I'll only give give you my first name. My first real name is Dwight. Second, I have done a couple of 3D renders, mainly to show off other people's models. A render is simply a 3D drawing of a 3D model. A 2D, sorry, a 2D drawing of a 3D model. If you're asking if I have made a 3D model of Crystal, no, I haven't. Though I have done a very small amount of 3D modeling as a game programmer, it's not my specialty. There are much better modelers out there. Number three. I don't think I'll be doing another fan film until a new 3D Star Fox game comes out. And I don't mean Star Fox 64 3D. I mean a new Star Fox game. Probably one that features Crystal, since that's what we're talking about here. There's simply not that much video of Crystal. And what little there is has been used in pieces by everyone Even if I come up with something totally cool, it will be unoriginal due simply to the fact that so many people have made Crystal fan films in the past. I have one fanfic which is not yet finished and I haven't worked on it in a year. I do plan to finish that eventually, but other than that, no idea. Number four. I spent about an hour writing out notes of everything that happened since the last podcast, 
and finding questions to answer. The questions, though, I answer those as, as I go and then keep track of the ones that I want to read on the podcast. When I record, it, which takes the length of the podcast plus a little more time for false starts or having to stop occasionally for various issues. Then I do some slight bit of editing, and there, that which can take anywhere from 30 minutes to add some theme music um, to something like double the length of the podcast because I have to integrate the audio of a guest host, for example. The release process is pretty quick. Just export, convert to MP3, post to my server, and then make a post on the site. Those last steps take maybe 30 minutes. A podcast episode can easily take half, a, half of a Saturday. And number five... There is, a, there is, in fact, a student version of Maya, which is free, and I gave the link, although you can certainly find it for free uh, simply by doing a Google search. And I don't mean, I don't mean an, illegal, an illegal copy of Maya. I mean a legal student copy. Now, from what I can understand, the student version does everything that the full version does, except that it can't import the same Maya files as the full version, and anything you render will have a watermark. So that kind of... That kind of uh, prevents you from using the uh, crystal model that Gray Firefox made because that's in the full version format. You can also download a trial for 30 days of Maya on their website. Maya is a very expensive program, no doubt, and that's why I prefer to use Blender, which is free. It doesn't have all the it doesn't have all the capabilities of Maya, but it has a fair amount, and it's a good start for 3D modeling. And though I have tons more questions to answer from my email, I have yet had time to actually uh, write out responses. So that is all I have in terms of the the questions. So the podcast has been recording for just over an hour, and I can't really think of anything else to talk about at this time. One of our viewers, Ben, has left because he is busy. Got to go to work. And uh, Gray Firefox is also busy and has to go, I think. Yes, he's busy. He's probably still listening, but, uh, but not able, not actively participating since it's just him. I'm kind of sad. I, I had a lot more people showing interest in a live podcast. Maybe I didn't get the word out of what time it was going to be early enough. But regardless, it's done now. And hopefully, I can start generating some more... Uh, some more interest in a live podcast in the future, if that's what you want to do. If you just want to do audio, that's fine. And I guess I'll continue to work on figuring out uh, how I can effectively have audio guests in real time on the uh, on the podcast without uh, too much trouble, and hopefully no editing for myself. So uh, yeah, that's the podcast. Um, let's see. Uh, don't forget to send any questions or comments you may have to my email address, mrcrystal at gmail.com. And though, as I say, I'm very, very far behind on that. I'm trying to catch up. Um, oh, there is one more thing. One last thing I wanted to mention um, before we go. Um, so I've been busy. Obviously, I'm a game programmer, which means that I'm now working nine-hour days on average. Uh, but even still, I still have weekends and I have time to myself in the, in the evenings that I have been using to work on a secret project that is not crystal-related. Not really. But it is kind of furry-related. And it's super secret, and that's all I'm going to leave. Uh, I'm going to just leave that with you. And by the way, I'm just going to tease you with that, and it's going to be a long time before you see this because um, I'm estimating it's going to be another year and a half before I can have something to show. So I guess uh, start guessing. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but... uh, That'll be interesting. But yeah, it's not crystal related. It's not it's not site related. But it is semi furry related, kind of. Otherwise, watch My Little Pony if you haven't already. That's a cool show. And uh, I'm going to try and do some more updates uh, to the site. And of course, um, I think now that I'm done with the podcast for the day, I'm going to spend the rest of the, uh, the afternoon and evening uh, getting this post ready to go. And then I'm going to start working on the, uh, the design of the Crystal Archive version 4. And if I'm lucky... 
I will have something to show by the end of the day. Who knows? All right, well, that's it. Remember, emails and comments to mrcrystal at gmail.com. I'm Mr. Crystal. Thank you for listening to the Crystal Archive podcast, episode number 28. And we'll see you next time. Mr. Crystal, signing off. Thank you.